Hello techies. Welcome to our brand new video series focused on helping you get the most of your experiences in life. Before we start the video, let's know about Uptalk. Uptalk is a live, interactive platform for software training, furnishing robust personalities who could take on universal business platforms. False. Based on what you saw, it is false. Based on what you saw. Maybe based on what you did. Like when you did your assignment too. You could see that in the higher employee screen. You could still change the location. You could still change the job profile. You could still change what full-time or part-time. Those things you could change correct. So that's why you said false. Which is true, I mean which is correct, which is the right way of answering. But now let me show you one particular parameter. Again, it's like... Let me show you one particular parameter that will change everything. Oh dear! Oh no yeah, it logged in. Okay, so if I go to Edit Tenant Setup, HCM, am I typing something? Edit Tenant Setup, HCM OK. There is a global parameter that controls whether this is true or not. Okay, I want to show you that particular option. Where is that option? It should have been here only. One second. exactly here. So there is this option which says allow override of restrictions on staffing events. Okay, okay, if I allow this, then you would be able to change. Okay, but you are actually doing all the tasks as Logan McNeil. So you are the one who is creating the configuration, so you can change it definitely. But if you are hiring as a recruiter or a hiring partner, you would not be able to change it if this is unchecked. Whatever is filled up automatically in the hiring restrictions, like the part-time or full-time, or let's say, if it is the location or if it is, like a regular employee, the worker type. If those things are coming in automatically, then you would not be able to change if this option is unchecked. Allow override of restrictions on staffing events. So the person who is going to do the hiring, they will not be able to override the restrictions at the time of hire. Okay. So this is important. So, if I allow this, then yes, the recruiter or the hiring partner, whoever is doing it, they would be able to change the values at the time of hire. Now, in large organizations sometimes, where the processes have to be strictly followed, they uncheck this. They would not allow you to override the restrictions. Only the H? Our admin or people with specialized access would be able to do that. Okay. This is done to make the system foolproof, so that you are not by mistake you are not doing something silly. Right. 
so this option is important. Allow override of restrictions on staffing events. So the answer to this question, when hiring into a position, if there are position restrictions, they will default in and cannot be changed. The answer is depending on the configuration. So it is true and false. Both. Okay. So true and false depending on configuration. Right. The next one. The pre-hire object is separate from the employee object. What do you think? Let me create a pre-hire object. False. Yeah, both. Well, it is true. The pre-hire object is separate. Let me show you. You'll say, Hey, Krish, you don't say this before and only after you ask the question. Then you tell me the answer. Well, yes, that's how we remember better. So let's go here and let's search for Logan McNeil. Or let's search for, let's say, Steve Morgan. Steve Morgan. Okay, I'll just search for this one and let's see what happens. Okay, now see. This is the employee object, where we have a beautiful picture of Steve, his employee details, etc. Right. This is the employee object. But do you see something else? A pre-hire. And here is the employee. So this is one, this is two. Separate objects. In one day, the pre hire and the employee is a separate object. If you click on the pre hire, it will tell you that, okay, this is a pre hire profile. This is actually the employee now. So this is the employee. So this worker is now an employee. That is fine. That is fine. This worker can be an employee. But the pre-hire and the employee are different. Two different objects in a workday right. They're related to one another, but they are not one and the same. They are two different objects. Okay, I think this is yeah. Anyway, they are two different objects in Workday. All right. What are the three different ways that pre-hire records can be created in Workday HCM? Manually integration. And. Recruitment module. Workday Recruitment Module Workday Recruitment Module Yes, three different ways. Manually That's what we used as part of the training. That's what we did. Then using an integration with an ATS or it can be using the Workday Recruitment Module. That's correct. Now what we will do is we will just try to hire someone into the system, right? We will try to hire, and this time we will also put in some compensation, right? Let's try to do that. So I would need 10 to 15 minutes. Will you be okay if I continue for the next 15 minutes? Yes, sure. The reason is because I have to redo some of the configurations right. I have to create those salary plans 
and allowance plans one more time in this particular system because it is not there. Okay, that's the reason. Okay, and before that I would also. So we created some compensation eligibility rules. Let's start with that. Okay, okay. Let's quickly verify whether we have our compensation. So how do we do that? Edit. Compensation eligibility rule. And I think we use the prefix www. Let's see. I want all employees of XYZ Motors. Okay, let's see. So we said, organization and superior organizations, XYZ Motors, per- Please do like, share, and subscribe to our channel. For more information, contact us at sales at the rate